Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday morning, um, special meeting of General Housing Military Affairs. We are here to um, do the next major step in our work on creating a proposal for using the um, CRF for um, helping to mitigate homelessness in the state of Vermont. It's General Housing Military Affairs Committee. We have many of the same advocates that we've had over the last couple of meetings, and we have um, David Hall as well from Legislative Council. And David, if you, um, I believe you've been given control of the screen. Um, basically, folks, um, just uh, to catch up as um, since yesterday, what I asked David to do is to put a lot of language into the bare bones that existed yesterday. Uh, that tries to clarify some of the um, appropriations that we are proposing. Uh, I think it was pretty clear yesterday that having a little bit more detail in terms of in terms of the process is um, was going to be more comfortable for us. So I want David to to be able to scroll through the document and and what I asked him to do was, for instance, um, we had a conversation yesterday about, well, should we use language that was suggested to us that almost names an organization or do we just go ahead and name the organization? So we should be seeing some language that that gives us that choice and you know, we'll just go through the document and um, make those choices as we go along. The other um, issue that came up yesterday is when we were talking about tier two um, and how that was going to work. And I brought that up with leadership and basically we don't, um, we have a choice. We can either put tier two suggestions into this particular proposal or we can take tier two out the, the words of tier two out and deal with them at a later date, um, which could be as soon as this week or next week or August. Um, but it's our choice whether we wanna continue. And I, and I think that there was some discomfort over uh, prognosticating what tier two could possibly look like, especially given the usage. But on the other hand, um, you know, the benefit of having tier two language is that it illustrates our commitment to moving some of these programs and making sure that there's funding in these programs as we move forward. So that's something that we should answer um, today as well. Um, again, we can, by, by taking language out of this proposal about tier two, it's not, does not mean that tier two does not exist for us. It just simply means that we're gonna, for, we're gonna have further conversation and perhaps be able to refine um, the tier two proposals. So, um, David, if you're here. I'm here. Uh, and if you wanna take over the screen, um, I'm assuming that our, um, I'm assuming that our two page proposal has lengthened to, oh, look, 11 pages. Um, so if you could just take us through this and, um, uh, Committee, just if you show me, a, um, I mean, the, the only people I can see on my screen right now, now that David is sharing the screen, is John and Tommy and Chip. Um, but if there's a, if there's a, do we want to go through this line by line, and uh, do we want to hear the whole thing, or do we want to go through it section by section and make the decisions as we go along? What do, what, what is um, it's your pleasure? I think I'm leaning, to, <clears throat> I'm personally leaning towards section Anybody? by section. Okay. I mean, but that's just my preference. I think I, I, I would absorb it section by section better than doing the whole thing and then circling back to the whole thing. And, and I think if, if David, if you can, it could give like a, a re overall reminder. So not a section by section, but a, I don't know, some high level something so that we get a, a something as overview, but then really go in section by section. So a little bit of a hybrid. I don't know if that would be possible. I agree with that approach. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Okay, David, is that clear enough? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so so let's do a let's do a synopsis of the of the overall um and then just go set and just go section by section <clears throat> okay um well 
Good morning, David Hall, Legislative Council. On your screen, you should have a draft 2.1 um, of the COVID relating housing legislation. The chair indicated uh, yesterday we work through the two page sort of skeletal framework. And then the construct of this draft is to put more uh, specific language in on most of the different components. And at this point, there are five of them. Um, so there are legal services, then um, basically housing and facilities, foreclosure protection, um, rental arrearages and eviction uh, stabilization, and then um, and then the last piece is sort of a modified VHIP to uh, provide for the renovation of private dwelling units to be brought into service to house COVID related uh, persons who have housing needs, whether those are persons experiencing homelessness or need rehousing for some COVID reason. So um, those are the five pots, each has a uh, different allocation of funding, all tier one at this point. Um, and then there is a tier two section here uh, in this bill, which we can discuss afterward. Um, but uh, <clears throat> let me go through each one of the uh, areas and discuss what's happening. So legal services, the first one really is still pretty straightforward. Um, it's $550,000. The, obviously, the bracketed language is to Vermont Legal Aid uh, to provide legal and counseling services to persons who are at risk of experiencing homelessness or who have suffered economic harm due to the COVID-19 crisis. So um, I'm sure at this point you've, you've heard uh, the proposal from Legal Aid to be able to provide services across the board for people who are in housing situations and need assistance with negotiations, with rents, with leases, with back rents, with uh, eviction proceedings. And um, so that's what this money is for. I don't think I said uh, definitively to you yesterday that I, I don't see any problem naming a particular recipient of receiving appropriations. We do do that. It, I think it's permissible. Um, it doesn't have to pass through the department. There are benefits and costs to doing it both ways. So um, I don't, again, along the theme yesterday of there's no one right way to do this. I just want you to know that you have that flexibility, whether you choose to name somebody or not. And um, I think, well, I'll leave it at that. So any questions on legal services? Um, just quickly, again, committee, I'm, I'm not easily sharing it, um, but there was an email from um, Angela Zakowski asking for some assistance as well, but I, and I've invited her to the meeting um, to talk about it, but I, again, I'm working on sharing, I'm going to send it to Ron first, and um, if I can, if I can get it cleanly, and then um, well, that'll be in your email box in a minute. It's not a specific appropriation. It's just a different way of going about it to, to follow along with what David is saying. Uh, Chair, I, yes. I'm sorry, I don't see the hair raise, a hand raise function when we're in this mode. Uh, but a, a comment on this and, and in general, uh, wouldn't it be better, <clears throat> excuse me, in most cases to specifically name the agency then we don't get into the issue of trying to, you know, determine who's going to do it. If we name it right from the very beginning in the legislation, it seems maybe we could move the money a little bit faster. Um, that's been the theory. So that's something that's really strongly in, in uh, you know, and that's why I asked this two versions or, you know, these versions of, of this whenever you see bracketed material that's kind of my equivalent of asking david to say this is not set this is a draft this is a suggestion 
so yes, uh, but we can follow up with that. Absolutely. Just if that's that if that's the thread we're following. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I see two more hands. Uh, Representative Triano and Representative Gonzalez. Yes, thank you, um, David. Uh, at some point in the discussion, it may have been around uh, uh, H 739, but legal aid services talked about entering an appearance, but not representing individuals in matters of uh, foreclosure and eviction. Um, and is that, do, do you know if that's the process that we're following here? Your explanation was very good. I, I'm pretty clear on what services would be rendered um, through this, but the only question I have, is that something that is anticipated as well from legal aid services? I don't know. I'd have to defer to Wendy or Jean. Wendy's here. Wendy, do you want to chime in? I can't see you, Wendy. So um, if you can either send a note or if you can unmute um, and take the microphone. Um, so I think we what you're referring to is what we call limited appearance, which the courts right. allow so that we can go in for just one hearing and, and not the whole case. Right. This, this section, I think, anticipates a much broader range of activities okay. because in reality, as you've heard from Jess Radborn, she does a lot of negotiation. She doesn't it with landlords directly and she doesn't necessarily um, enter an appearance or she just does for purposes of entering a settlement document. Okay. So I think yeah. this would be the full range, whatever is appropriate given the case. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, perfectly, yes. Okay, Representative Gonzalez. Uh, I just wanted to um, support what Representative Walt said in terms of naming folks and, and if we can get those, the organizations named as we get this out the door, then I think the money would get quicker uh, after we're finished with our work. So I just wanna, um, wanted to verbalize that. Thank you. Um, okay, anybody else in this section right now? Does anybody have any opposition uh, to taking, um, well, I wanna hold off on, 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 on this for a minute in, in terms of, because I wanted to hear from, um, so the notion here is to make sure that that in this particular case, tenants, and I guess, Wendy, the question here is, is 99% of the work that you do with tenants, I mean, landlords tend not to come to you for legal help. Is that accurate? You're unmuted. Yeah, I'm on mute. Yeah, okay. No, you're not. You're not you're, oh, I'm I, sorry. I can hear Thank it. you. Um, Yes, I think we very, very rarely represent landlords and that might happen in situations for the senior citizens law project when the landlord is a senior citizen and we don't have the same kind of uh, income guidelines that we have, for example, in the poverty law project. So it's very limited that we represent landlords. However, I wanna emphasize that we do work directly with landlords regularly on settling these, these cases. Okay. Um, and so, um, Angela Zakowski has joined us and Angela, I just want to, and, and the email that Angela sent this morning is, is in your email box right now. So Angela, I just, if, if you're available to talk uh, the question, basically the, the issue that you raised in your email to, to us is that, um, is that this is a direct appropriation to legal aid to help tenants, but that landlords may need the same kind of assistance. Um, can you just talk a little bit about that? Correct. I mean, I'm anticipating at least my organization and there may be some other folks that work with landlords who will be fielding these questions, help landlords navigate through this process. Um, perhaps doing some of the same negotiation that legal aid is describing uh, with working with tenants. Um, and, you know, I, the committee may or may not know, but I, I am a one woman shop. Um, it is me and a part time um, assistant. Uh, so if the volume is what everybody is anticipating, um, I will need some help. I cannot do all of this myself. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's 
uh, just my ask is for the committee to maybe think a little broader that there may be some other folks that are providing assistance um, as landlords and tenants both navigate through the system. And so Josh Hanford, Commissioner Hanford, you're here. Um, under the normal course of business, is this something that is that that could be requested through um, the Department of Housing as a grant, um, whether it's, I mean, we're talking about CRF, we're talking about an expansion of need throughout the rest of this calendar year. Is that something that may be available through the Department of Housing in existing funds or existing programs? Um, no, we don't receive any general funds to support housing other than Sean Gilpin and, and Arthur Hamlin's uh, salaries. Um, I'm talking about in terms of in terms of a grant request, you know, with all of this, with all of this stuff, they had a grant request from um, from the Vermont Landlords Association for funds that would that would provide the same, uh, you know, similar services as just described. Is that something that they would be able to apply through you or is this something that would require a direct um, appropriation? It if we were appropriated some funds from this Corona relief funding, we could uh, subgrant to any entity to help. You know, if we defined um, broadly that we needed, you know, legal support for tenants, we needed um, technical assistance and legal support for landlords, you know, um, and other services, we could put out um, those grants to different organizations if we were allocated money. Absolutely. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, represent, uh, Representative Gonzalez, did you, is this an old hand or is this a new hand? Sorry, that's an old hand. Okay, I got it. Uh, Representative Hango. Thank you. Um, I'm really grateful to Angela for sending this email um, before we really got started on this because I'm a firm believer in if we're helping tenants, we also need to help landlords because there's two sides to this equation. And I think that um, the Department of Housing and, and Community Development is really the best positioned to um, service both of those groups. Um, I think that they both can then request grants and um, be granted money if there's a need. And that's kind of a, a moving piece right now. We don't know how much the landlords are going to need. And if they do end up needing money, it might be a little harder for them to go through Vermont Legal Aid um, because it's not a big umbrella organization that can, as Josh said, they can appropriate to various groups. So um, I'm definitely in favor of broadening it to DHCD and not just Vermont Legal Aid. Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Byron. I just wanted to say that I also support making sure there's there's money for both sides of the equation as we move through this. Um, I think there will be added legal and administrative expense, especially for independent landlords. Um, going into the unknown, I think having a, a support mechanism for those individuals is wise. Um. The, I guess the question I would have just in general, I mean, for us all is, um, no, no, I, I, I'll retract that. Tommy, Representative Walls. I, I wanna add uh, my support too for having some sort of funding for landlords and probably through uh, DHCD. And I'm thinking uh, to help them whatever, with whatever process is necessary, for example, also in the, uh, the housing rehabilitation process, if that's a grant application form and uh, you know, land, there may be landlords who aren't so good at doing that kind of thing, if they could use some help, I think we should provide it to them. So the question like, so as of this, this second now, I mean, just in terms of, um, is this something that we want to, we didn't get a direct number, 
And again, we haven't we haven't um, considered this. We've had a direct number from VLA for weeks and weeks now, um, the knowledge of what their program is. So the question here is, do we try to um, put a number down that may be a direct, uh, I mean, again, I have no idea what that would cost um, and what, but, but in terms of if there's a process here that, um, and, and Angela, this is, this is for, you in terms of where this document goes and how it's going to be, uh, how it travels. Obviously it's gonna go from our committee to appropriations and it's gonna to go to the Senate and then it's gonna come back to us. But the idea, well, presumably, um, but the, the with, without a set proposal or without a set um, understanding, I guess the question here for us is, um, does this, do we put in language, you know, specific language in to where DHCD is that allows for an application process to happen for these purposes um, for, for the Vermont Landlords Association um, and then work on, then work towards a more specific proposal as, um, as this bill moves through, as this proposal moves through the system. Um, Representative Stevens, uh, in response to that, I think my initial uh, response or proposal was one, so yes, I could provide DHCD or uh, this committee with a number, but there may be other organizations out there um, that can also assist with this. Um, it wasn't necessarily that mine is the only one, mm -hmm. um, and it may be more appropriate for um, some other outfit to assist with portions of this or have increased personnel or capabilities. Um, and DHCD and ACCD may be the entity that is best positioned to make that decision ultimately as to which organizations um, will be of assistance. Um, you know, and just sort of off the top of my head, I'm, you know, having another full-time person um, in addition to myself and a part-time person, you know, I mean, maybe talking a hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars It's not a giant, you know, we're pretty streamlined and we mm -hmm. move <laughs> on sort of a shoestring budget, but some assistance would be helpful. No, I, I am totally sympathetic to that and, and acknowledge that, that it is, um, you know, I mean, what do you mean you can't do it all? Um, so there's, there's a feeling that there's a, there's definitely a feeling of, of acknowledgement that that's, this would be helpful and necessary to, to provide this support. Representative Hango and then um, Wendy. Um, so I just looked quickly through this bill and I wondered if um, legal services could be added to number four on page three. Um, under rental assistance eviction protection, if we rolled legal services into that um, and specified that it would, well, it is, it is specified sort of that says the department shall in, administer in partnership with statewide organization with an expertise in partnering with private landlords, nonprofits, other agencies and municipalities, et cetera. And it's also for tenants. So I wondered if that might be a good place for this legal concept to reside. Um, and certainly if, if the funding is an issue, if, if for, for instance, Vermont Legal Aid is, is concerned that, that, that my proposal is removing the $550,000, I'm, I'm not suggesting that at all. Um, and maybe that can be found elsewhere in this, um, in these line items that we could specifically say a dollar figure, but administered by DHCD. Because really DHCD is the one organization or one agency in my mind that, that has experience dealing with all of the entities that are in the housing world. Thank you. Um, uh, Wendy Morgan. Um, so I'm not quite sure how to respond with the last one. My, oh, my biggest concern would be that 
there be clarity on whether or not we're going to get this grant so that we can start hiring people because that's going to take, be a bit of a process and so we don't want to have that lag that would be my biggest concern um, representative kalaki uh, chair I, I would put um a placeholder of just seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in here and um through the department as we discussed and then see if as we go through the other line items if we can find the 200,000 if we need to and I just am the other part I just would, I'm eager for us to get beyond number one here and what, whether it fits where a representative Tango says or if, I, I like that it's there by itself it's an important part but it can it can fit somewhere else if we need to but so I would just say let's put a placeholder of 750 and let's move to the next part i would if the committee agrees are you are is are you suggesting at the second that that the idea is to just put is to take legal aid out of it and just say legal services yes okay and wendy had just said that will slow us down that would slow down the process for their purposes anyway um so just just to be clear. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Representative Triano? Yes, I'm not in favor of that. I think that that, um, I, I agree with Wendy, that would slow things down. I think that what's represented in number one is uh, adequate and, um, and uh, on point uh, so that it should stay there, I believe. And let's, so let's move on. Um, we're going to keep the brackets around that right for this time being. I think Lisa, uh, Wendy, did you have another comment or did I not take your hand down? Okay. Um, and we will get to page three where that, where, uh, where Lisa mentioned that, that legal services are, um, mentioned that gives DHCD freedom to do exactly this. It sounds like, so David, if we could go on, um, So that would be um, the housing and facilities. Are you are you with us, David? Sorry, I don't know. I was still muted. I apologize. Um, number two here, housing and facilities. So this is eleven million dollars. And the bracketed language is to the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, which the board shall use in part through grants to nonprofit housing partners and service organizations for housing and facilities necessary to provide safe shelter and assistance for persons who are at risk of experiencing homelessness, mitigate COVID-19 effects, and enable compliance with public uh, health precautions. So you may recognize the language. It is the same language from your S350 amendment. This used to be <clears throat> this used to be the shelter uh, specific piece of this proposal. And following on yesterday's testimony, um, I think there was sort of broad-based support for. Uh, expanding the scope of this because it may not necessarily be limited to shelter renovations. It may not uh, necessarily be for, for instance, CDC specific compliance, but there's just a lot of issues that could come up. And so this language is broader. It is intended to give more flexibility and the proposal on the table is to give it directly to VHCB. Questions? All right, um, Representative Hango. So um, reading this, I gathered shelters and I know we're moving away from shelters. I know we're not really talking about it today, but the AHS plan that came out indicates that yes, indeed, they are, as I've been asking all along over a number of months, they are moving away from the shelter and motel system. So 
my concern is granting all this, allocating all this money to VHCB um, and not again to an agency or a department in the administration that really has oversight over all, all housing. Um, I just am a little reluctant to name one organization in this case, because this is gonna look really different. Um, my, I'm envisioning requests for proposal um, for grants for various types of housing, um, not just um, housing and facilities necessary to provide safe shelter, which to me really means a shelter or a motel in an emergency situation. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure how this differs from other parts of the bill that specifically deal with other units, other types of units. So I guess I have two objections. It's not clear to me what types of dwellings this, this refers to because I've, I feel like it shelters in our motels and I'm not entirely certain that we should de um, designate one particular organization for this. So thank you, sorry to ramble about that. Okay, thank you, Representative Kalaki. Thank you. Um, David, I'm a little, I, it's a little vague for me as well, because I thought it was, I mean, we, we, we do have to renovate and adapt our shelters to make them more compliant now with, with all of the new precautions. And so I thought this portion was really for renovation and expansion of our shelters. Um, so it says for housing facilities necessary, it doesn't really earmark it in the way that, uh, unless I'm misunderstanding it, because the other thing is could, if we, if we, I mean, we spent an enormous amount of hotel vouchers. If I read this, hotel vouchers could be part of this as well. Um, and, and I don't think that that was what, the, what we had earmarked this for. So this is, um, I'm in favor of, of adapting the shelters as we need to and uh, renovating them. I think it's the right agency, but I'm not sure that it's clear for me. And maybe I've okay. misunderstood, but, but I thought this was for renovation and adaption of shelters. Um, I'm does uh, Jen or Gus want to address this language at all and how you read it from the VHCB perspective? Gus. Mr. Chairman, good morning. Gus Seward for the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. Thank you. Totally, I can't hear you. Uh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, a little bit, yep. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> And thank you to staff for broadening the language a bit. Um, our intention here is to survey all the shelters, invite them all to apply, and we and just do not know and have not had the same level of contact exactly where the needs will land and whether for and I used Barry as an example yesterday, they may not want to renovate their existing shelter. They may want to put the money into a new and different facility that would be much better. So we understand the intent. Uh, we will certainly live with that intent. We will conduct outreach to that community. We have funded virtually every shelter in the state at one time or another, some so long ago that uh, they may not remember that we've given them a grant in the past, but we do have an ongoing relationship with those organizations. The structure of the board um, is that the Agency of Human Services is represented on our board. Um, uh, the secretary is represented on the board and we will be working in partnership and closely with them in allocating any funds you provide. 
Um, so our goal was simply to have more flexibility if somebody wants to do something different because their current shelter is really not adequate to the current job. And I think this language gives us the breadth, understanding exactly what your intent is here um, to improve shelters where that's the appropriate thing to do. Okay, and I, and folks, you'll see just underneath that bracketed material, that language, there's the original language which says social shelter rehabilitation. Um, those are the two choices that are, you know, that that is the exist, that's the language that was that we talked about yesterday. And the, um, the, the language that Gus was just explicating was, um, was an expansion of that language. Uh, Representative Triano. Well, that clarifies for me uh, because I was wondering where that language had gone uh, to be uh, COVID uh, to be CDC uh, comply compliant uh, with these shelters, and I envisioned that uh, there would be um, no uh, congregative li living situations, and um, I envisioned you know private rooms uh, in these shelters and such, so that um, the safety would be uh, considerably better. And as I say, CDC uh, compliant. So if that language is in there, I'm okay with this. Representative Gonzalez, thank you. Yeah, I think for me, the, the increase of flexibility is um, really important. Uh, I don't usually talk about it, my, my spouse is a builder. And so uh, whenever there's a renovation there, uh, in theory, it's very different than when you actually get into it. And so thinking about shelters and what they need to do in order to be able to provide uh, provide uh, CDC compliant um, spaces, it might not be possible with their current building it's in confirmation in configuration. And so uh, I, I really think that VHCB is situated to be able to get the funds out as quickly as possible and to be able to provide for the, the flexibility that shelters will need as they look at their existing buildings and see what might be possible in getting contractors in else and that about tiny homes and the other things like that that provide some flexibility and so I, I like this language because I think it, it does what we need it to do of getting money to an organization that can is connected, can really provide it for the shelters and really provide it for the folks that need it. Great, thank you. Representative uh, Walls. Uh, thank you, I support the broad, broader language as well. And, and Gus uh, said exactly what I was going to say. Uh, it, we specified that it has to be for rehabilitating existing shelters that might not be the wisest use of the money and again I was thinking specifically of Good Samaritan Haven in, in Barrie where trying to redesign that facility may not be the wisest thing to do it may be uh, wiser to look at something different uh, that could accommodate uh, more people so I do support the broader language. Thank you Representative Hango. Sorry, I didn't think I was next in the queue. So I'm seeing language with one bracket and oh, see the second one, but I'm not seeing um, other language about CDC. Were you saying that there was language about CDC? In, in the here? second, in the, in, the, in the original language on line 15, oh, okay. that's on our screen. Oh, uh, no, CDC is not. On so with guidance of the Centers for Disease Control. That's the screen. I'm, I'm looking at David David Hall's shared screen. And the original number two from yesterday talks about um, to achieve compliance with guidance of the Centers for Disease Control and to ensure public health. Okay, sorry. I guess I'm not seeing the exact same thing that you are. It, what, I'm running, what I'm running yeah. into is the, the 2.1 draft that I printed off that was from yeah. 151 yesterday is not syncing up with what's on the screen. Exactly, yeah, we're not seeing and I'm, That's what it's totally throwing me off right now. Yeah, me too. I'm really sorry, but this is- um, But yeah, my printed copy is not this. Right, because so- I just, I just added the 
piece from yesterday so that you could see them juxtapose with one another on the screen. Oh, okay. So 2.1 that was on our website when we started this meeting this morning is not what you have up on the screen. N not as of four minutes ago. I okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I That's, that, I, that was really throwing me off right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, need, I yeah. need to like blow it up to read it on my own screen so i'm not reading it off the screen so anyway regardless of that i'll look at that in a minute um i'm just curious about the surveying shelters for ideas of whether they need to renovate or what they need to do um that gus mentioned um i know my shelter in in franklin county they already know they had a plan ready to go before covid19 started so um to me, that just seems like a duplicative effort to resurvey shelters. I know Rutland has a plan, um, and I know my shelter works very closely with OEO, and um, I I feel like that's already in place. So to reinvent the wheel would be wasting time, not um, not saving time. So that's my point. And could that new version be posted to our web page, please, Ron? The the new version is what's in 2.1, if I'm not mistaken. No, I, I actually meant the version no. of both languages. Could that be posted? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. What I'm sorry, please say again, what is it you're asking me to post? There's language there's language that David just added to the screen. Um, so I don't know if you can get a cut and paste from David to just post it. I don't know what I, 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 I all he's doing is posting the language that's not in the printed version. I mean, I don't know what the problem is here. Um, the problem is, the problem is I need- Lisa, excuse me, Lisa, the, Emily's talking, please. I, I just wanted to say he put it up for us to be able to look at it and compare them between the two. It's not actually a version is my perspective of this. He's sharing a screen. We've got two versions up there. We can make a decision. I hate to have two of the same thing posted on our when, when it's just being put there for us to review so we can compare the two. That's how I'm seeing it. Thank you. May I ask a question then? Please do. Thank you. In order to facilitate my making a decision about this, I need to see the language as it was. And what he had on the screen was very helpful. I would like to keep it and look at it somehow. I don't, I didn't want it to go away. So whether he could email that to us um, so we could look at it or- it just, it just hit our inboxes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, can we scroll down? So, so again, we're 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 doing, we're, folks, we're we're doing this in a way that's kind of a little bit of a hybrid of what we started off with doing. So we're not, we're we're getting the we're getting both the high view and we're we're really getting into this. This is fine, but just I just want to be conscious of the time and and the page we're on. So um, we will come back to this. Uh, we will we will continue to get the the update of what's on in the bill as David is presenting it, and then we will have to come back and go section by section again, um, and and make those decisions. So, David, if you could scroll down to, um, and David, I just had a question about the the eleven million dollar number. Is that something that I can't remember where the um, I can't remember where the um, eleven million dollar number came. Um, if that was taking what came from number five and adding it to number nine, or if it was simply, um, and whether the math and adds up at the end of this. So let's just sure. scroll down. Um, yeah, just, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you finish, you go ahead. I, I, I think you'll have to decide that um, the, so there was the $2 million in yesterday's version that didn't really have a purpose yet. And so the discussion was, do you add uh, that 2 million to the housing and facilities because they were both intended for VHCB or do you split that between uh, the advanced VHIP and this? So that would actually be 10. So I, I, I think you guys have to decide where the, what to do with that $2 million that yesterday was non-specified 
and and now needs a new a home if you're not going to have that so, so the 11 million the 11 million is 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 a is a possibility as is the increase in foreclosure protection i mean so let's yeah, yeah let's just go down to foreclosure protection and and um yeah. I, I apologize if that's confusing. I, I I think it's fair to say that all of these numbers are, you know, still iterative. I believe is the phrase iterative. Great. So just for your uh, viewing ease and pleasure on the screen, I just I just moved this down a little bit so it would be on the same page. So the next bucket is foreclosure protection, six million dollars. So there's basically two ways that have been uh contemplated to approach this one as well there's the first bracketed uh paragraph which is shorter it's it's to dhcd to provide foreclosure protection prevention services which will be administered in partnership with a vermont-based statewide organization with expertise in financing and promoting affordable safety and housing opportunities for low and moderate income vermonters and uh that's not naming anybody in particular. Obviously, this is language that Commissioner Hanford had supplied to you previously. Um, and then the other approach is uh, more direct. It's directly to VHFA to provide financial and technical assistance to stabilize low and moderate income homeowners and prevent home foreclosures for Vermont families. This language is taken from uh, an earlier draft of, I believe it was called the Home Forever Fund that the agency had suggested, but so it's, it's modeled directly on that. It has more stuff in it. So subdivision A, you know, the duty to design and implement a program funding the statewide regional housing partners administer the distribution of funds to homeowners in need of assistance, provide technical homeowner, uh, technical assistance to homeowners. B, um, require a standard application form describing the process with instructions to uh, process will ensure equitable approval application distribution system, ensuring accountability for partners and homeowners. C, agency develop eligibility requirements for partners to implement uh, to ensure funds are applied towards homeowners equitably, including limitations for eligibility regarding earned income forms and guidelines show proof of need, limitations on the actual benefits will not exceed the mortgage liability or three times the monthly mortgage liability, whichever is less, and a reapplication process that provides that if there are remaining funds at the end of three months, they can apply for assistance again. So no right or wrong way, but uh, obviously there's more detail in the second piece of the proposal. Okay, and um, I we received testimony from Maura Collins yesterday about this, and from Josh. Can they kind of turn their mute their microphones on? and weigh in on the language and tell me if this is sufficient or if it is accurate or if it's preferred or if there are fixes that need to be suggested to the language. Maura, you can jump in for, I don't know, I can't see anybody right now. So um, Maura, if you wanna jump in first, or um, yeah, Maura, if you wanna jump in first, that would be great. If it's okay with Josh, uh, Maura Collins with VHFA, um, we would prefer being the named organization that you see as the second choice uh, that David walked through. Um, like you've heard from others, we are already working to design this program throughout the month of June so that we can launch it. I, I can't commit all it can launch on July 1, but wow, I'd like to. So um, being named would keep our foot on the accelerator um, organizationally. Another change is that um, as we've been designing and discussing this with the department, uh, we think that it's best to use the regional housing partner organizations referenced for the first time um, on page two on line five, um, that, that, uh, that reference may have been wrong because I know we have different things going on right now. Uh, to use the, those as the technical assistance piece, they would provide the um, counseling and assistance 
uh, in that way, but it is uh, to move the money efficiently. VHFA will be administering and working with the loan servicers um, to take in the applications and directly uh, sending money to the servicers. We don't intend to send the money to the um, regional housing partner organization who would then send the money to the borrower who would then send it to the servicer. We wanna work directly with servicers, which we have a long history of doing. So the on your committee page, Ron just uploaded um, some edits um, for you to see and track changes uh, where we strike the regional housing partner organizations. But again, our intention is to absolutely use them for the technical assistance piece, just not for the distribution of funds piece. Um, there is a place where we've inserted some language um, in part C, um, part and then number two, um, where it talks about showing proof of demonstrable need for assistance. We'd like for it to say, show certification or other proof just to clarify that like in other CARES Act um, places, when, when a borrower gets forbearance, they only have to attest that they are without uh, employment. And that could be proof, but we wanna be clear that uh, that kind of certification or attestation counts as proof uh, so that we can move this along, not have um, too many restrictions. And that's in compliance what, with what we see the forbearance rules are from the CARES Act in other places. I don't, we don't wanna have to get W-2s and um, pay stubs and things like that. And finally, um, potentially the most meaningful change is that um, later on in that section C, it talks about three times of the monthly mortgage liability and um, Vermont Legal Aid and VHFA uh, think that that should be six times. Um, the Josh said that that was okay with the administration. The intention of that is um, to not have someone need to um, apply, for example, in August and then reapply um, just a few months later. We want to get this money out. There also are a considerable number of costs to a borrower that are not covered by this assistance, HOA fees, um, uh, tax, uh, not taxes, um, uh, mortgage insurance, property insurance, these things won't be covered by this program. So giving them a bit more of their principal and interest paid for will help make them whole and truly cure their problem as opposed to band-aiding a lot of people who, and maybe we're just postponing the inevitable. We want to really fix um, this burden for borrowers by giving them a bit more. Since the money is so limited. I mean, this is smaller than all these other pots of money that you're talking about. So like everyone else, I wanna put in a plug for some of that $2 million to come towards foreclosure assistance. I wanna be very clear because the, we have 72% of Vermonters are homeowners. And so a, we think a lot of them are going to need this kind of assistance. Uh, I think that um, Borrowers won't wait until September, until they have six months to apply because the money could be potentially gone by then. So allowing for that six months, again, doesn't play that game of making them apply for three months and then apply again, and maybe the money's not there. So those were some of the reasons for these changes. Okay, and just to, yeah, so out of that $2 million, again, in the in the in some of the bracketed material, there's another million dollars proposed to go from five, which it was yesterday, to six. And I think we're also looking at, again, depending on um, need or use, obviously the tier two, this is kind of an argument to, this is kind of an argument to disengage the tier two conversation from this, from today's conversation, because that's going to, I mean, we're, we have to react to the actual usage of this. So, um, committee any thoughts on uh, and actually commissioner um my understanding is that you uh, support this language uh, yes i support everything Maura just said uh completely um and, and we'll we'll add that the uh, thoughts right now are to provide some of our hud um cdbg assistance to help with the home ownership center's technical assistance separate from this money that is a good fit we have relationships we have agreements we can add money to, 
uh, and it's a good use of our CDBG uh, COVID money. And I would second what Maura said that um, this is a pretty small bucket compared to everything else and, and keeping homeowners housed and not going down this road is very efficient way to spend money, uh, prevent big problems. I don't, none of us know the exact amount that, that the need will be, but um, we don't want to leave uh, uh, homeowners shortchange there. You know, we have one of the largest homeowner rates in the country with a lot of low income people that are on the edge. So just flag that. No, I, I, we hear you. And, uh, um, and Josh just ran away. Um, so I can't, there you go. Um, the, the, I just want to make clear that the money that you do have that you mentioned about technical assistance that would go to the home ownership centers or other, other centers like that would be relatively fast and flexible if necessary. I, I, I mean, I know that there's usually an annual, uh, process for granting money on an annual basis. But in the, in this case, again, we have to keep reminding ourselves that all this money that we're talking, all of this money that we're talking about has to be spent in some way, shape or form by the end of, um, by the end of 2020. The, so the just, flexibility, just to, yeah. Just to clarify, um, uh, the, the CDBG money that we have already from COVID moved faster than I've ever seen HUD move money. I mean, we received a notice that we would get this. We amended, we applied, it's already in our account quicker than our process to distribute this. And we have another 2 million coming, which will also be quick. And that doesn't have six months timelines. It has two years. So we can really tailor that money to help people ongoing after January 1st uh, as they need it, which will be very helpful. Yep, great. Um committee any comments on the suggestions from um vhfa or should we just forward it to david or just have david um i guess the question is are these changes sufficient do we approve of them and shall they be incorporated into our draft representative triano yes i would support this language i think that um uh, <clears throat> whatever that these changes are uh are positive changes and from what we hear, uh, we'll uh, um, get this money out and uh, directed in a manner in which it should be. So I would support this language change. Representative Gonzalez. Just echo that, I support the language change. Okay. Anybody else? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. Okay, so David, if you can um, strip that language from the um, document on our document page on, and insert that. Um, all right, what's next? David, reshare your screen. And again, that number, that foreclosure protection number is $6 million. That was taking an extra million dollars from the, from the, what was number five. This is the original request for foreclosure protection from um, the department. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, or I can, anyway, I'll speak for myself. So the next uh, bucket is rental assistance and eviction protection. So this is $30 million. Um, there's again brackets. The first one is two DACD to provide rental assistance to persons who have suffered harm due to COVID-19, including rental arrearages since April 1st, security dis deposits and expenses to secure new rental housing, which the department shall administer in partnership with a Vermont-based statewide organization with expertise in partnering with private landlords, nonprofits, other statewide agencies, and promoting preserving affordable housing, and with prior experience in administering federal rental assistance funds. So this is, again, to DHCD to uh, the organization that shall not be named. That was a joke. And then um, on the next piece, the bracketed language is much more specific and involved. It's, uh, well, yeah, so here 
you would have DHCD develop and implement a rental housing stabilization program to provide funding to Vermont State Housing Authority to administer the distribution of funds to landlords on behalf of tenants in need of rent or rearage assistance. And then we've got details. In developing the program, department will coordinate with AHS and partner organizations on homelessness to provide additional support services and promote upstream homelessness prevention and housing stability. Under B, department will require the authority, that's VSHA, to develop a standard application form for landlords and tenants, describes the process, includes instructions and examples. Under C, authority will ensure equitable approval of applications, notice of grant decision within 10 days, appeals within 10 days, and distribution system that ensures accountability. Authority will ensure decisions are made according to the rules of the program without regard to any previous information or decisions known concerning tenants. No tenant or other landlord can benefit or suffer harm due to previous knowledge or decisions. Under D, the authority will develop eligibility requirements to ensure funds are applied equitably to tenants, currently homeless households and landlords, those in most need, including certification of rent arrears, waiver of termency, termination of tenancy or eviction for a period of time, waiver of late fees, compliance with the rental housing code, agreement not to increase rent for a period of time. Other requirements would be that uh, assistance is provided directly to landlords on tenants' behalf. There would be a streamlined application process for certification of past due rent. Authority require landlords to delay or cease eviction proceedings. Some of this is overlapping, but I don't know that that matters. Um, under four, authority will adopt limitations on assistance. We won't exceed actual liability of months due at the BSJ payment level. Uh, Reapplication if there's more money. Under five, unsustainable tenancies that get emergency housing benefits from DCF general assistance. You can use a fund for first month, uh, last month's rent, security deposit, necessary payments through December 30th. Landlord has to certify that he won't evict or she won't evict. Should the tenant leave prior than the amount received for, blah, 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 reimburse if appropriate, not later than August 10th. Thereafter, upon request from the legislative committee, the authority shall issue a report to the legislature detailing number and amount of grants awarded in each category by the calendar. So, short version and the long version. Okay, and this, so this is, um, this is pretty clear about the, the, um, interface between the authority that we're giving to VSHA um, and landlords and tenants to create the system so that so that landlords um, are able to receive their back rent. Um, it doesn't specifically say anything about DHCD being able to have funds available for landlord associations or um, as proposed earlier. Um, Though it does hint at it, I mean, it intimates it earlier on. But I would um, first committee. What do you think of this expanded language? This is pretty thorough, but it adds a, it adds a real element to me of 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 um, transparency and um, accountability to all the organizations involved. That's why we. That's why I asked for it um, and, and asked for it to be included. This is a large. This is the largest chunk of money that we, and this is only part of the largest chunk of money that we would be allocating for these purposes. Um, so, I'd like to get your thoughts on on this language. I have two questions, uh, Representative Hango. Thank you. I think this is where I was proposing to um, maybe just add one phrase about legal assistance for landlords and tenants. I didn't mean to, um, I didn't mean to say that it was already in here. Um, so I think this is where I was thinking of um, taking language from number one and putting it in number four. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Representative Triano, then Kalaki. Thank you. Um, I think that, um, as you say, uh, Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, that I think that, that language does uh, sort of uh, intimate that uh, or indicate that uh, there is room there. I would support language a little bit more specific for the landlords, uh, but I think also that the transparency that you mentioned uh, and reading through this section uh, is very important because we really don't know what the feds are going to come back with 
uh, for changes uh, as hastily as this was put together in DC. Um, I think it's safe to, uh, to have a language that is uh, clarifying and, uh, and uh, transparent. So I support this section. I would also support um, uh, from Re Representative Hango's perspective, a, uh, a little bit of language that would uh, include the uh, landlord services. Hey, thank you. Um, Representative Kalaki. Yes, I, I too uh, like the expanded language very much. Thank you for all that work. Um, Dave, David, the, the one question I have is in this report, you talk about the August 10th um, report to the legislature, but there was a second part of that that um, we were that I looked at yesterday um, that then the, the program should be reviewed on or before September 1, along with other coronavirus relief funds, housing programs to determine whether funds should be shifted. My concern is that if we wait till middle December with, with all of this money, we've, we've designated agencies, but there's no way to recalibrate if we need to. Um, and there's not going to be time in the last week of December to reallocate these funds. And so there was a proposal that ties into this, re this report that's in this of August 10th to be able to look by September 1 to see if we need to recalibrate all this depending on the need for all these um, services and support. And I, I, I think that's important to have because some of these may be really stretched and all the money's used. Like Maura said, maybe the foreclosures, we're gonna need to put more money there if somewhere else the money is not being used. So I, I just wonder if we should insert that language as well. My question. Okay. Um, any th thoughts on that? I, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm sorry, reading the future right now is really not my, my bailiwick. Um, I'm not feeling very strong in my crystal ball. So it's hard to, it's hard to call. Um, let's let that stew for a minute. Um, Representative Hango. Um, the bottom of page three, top of page four, where um, it's in brackets, section A1, the Department of Housing and Community Development shall develop and implement a rental housing stabilization program to provide funding to VSHA to administer the distribution of funds to landlords on behalf of tenants in need of rent arrearage assistance. And I thought maybe just a simple, um, going back to my suggestion, a simple addition would be, and um, funds needed for legal assistance or something to that effect that sounds better than what I just said. Thank you. Um, uh, okay. Um, I have one thing that I, I noticed that on, uh, I think it's on page three, line 11. Uh, there was a reference to April 1. I believe all the COVID money is supposed to be available from March 1 on, and I just want to make sure that that's accurate, that, that that's consistent. Um, I, may have, I may have suggested that in error. Um, can I just throw something out in terms of, in terms of the, um, in, in terms of direct assistance or potential direct assistance via DHCD? Um, we have, we have this $2 million that, that could be reappropriated. We took, we're proposing to take at least one and moving it to, um, foreclosure to get that request up to speed to, to be the, 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 um, administration's request. Um, is there a pos and then this other million dollars while it's out there may, you know, go to the VHIP program. We've heard various and sundry things about the, you know, the, 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 the attraction of the enhanced VHIP program. Um, I mean, do we want to make, and this is going to be a quick yes or no, do we want to make a quick um, appropriation or allocation is the best word for it, an allocation of $250,000 that DHCD would be able to utilize for these up to $250,000 that the DHCD would be able to utilize for these purposes. We can have a separate line item if we want. If um, I, I, I hesitate lumping the, uh, taking away the direct 
um, to the direct allocation to VLA, but by the same token, if we if there are um, between Vermont Landlords Associations and other organizations, um, it, 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 it I'm just throwing it out there. Should should we consider putting a direct um, like the VLA? So instead of one, we have one Vermont Legal Assistance, and then if we had in two or one A, um, that that uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars would be made available based on the language that we're talking about here. Um, that DHCD would be um, that DHCD would be in charge of because um, that's essentially what this language seems to me to be saying. So um, I'm just throwing it out there. But Lisa, Representative Hango. I don't know about the 250 thousand. To me, that doesn't sound like a lot. But we don't. We have no idea what's really going to be needed for landlords for um, legal assistance. So I hesitate to name a number on that. Um, so I, I guess I'm not in favor of a line item with a number on it. But okay. thank you. Yeah. Um, Representative Toronto. Well, we did hear from Legal Aid that they also work with landlords. So, um, and, and again, not having a, a figure um, is difficult, but um, it seems to me like uh, administering $250,000 the landlords association would be adequate. Um, I'm not. It would, be, it would be landlord associations and others, as as right. Angela pointed out. It wouldn't yeah. necessarily be straightforward. It would be. It would. I mean, I, my concern with this language here is that um, if we grant this money to, if we if we grant this money directly to the state housing authority, DHCD isn't going to have those funds right there specified to be used for other landlord purposes. Yeah. And so I just, I'm just suggesting this in terms of, um, you know, if DHCD doesn't have this money to grant, then the language that's in the bill, I mean, I think the language in the bill is, is, is assuming that there's going to be a, a, a money that the, that this $42 million might reside with, with DHCD. And if we're having it reside with the housing authority, then DHCD still needs the money to grant. Um, Representative Zott. Yeah, I, I support a specific dollar amount listed as well. I think it makes sense. And I thought, unless I was confused on the matter, I thought uh, Landlord Association threw out a number of around 150000 for a staff person to dedicate or to build time in that regard. So it seems like we built in some cushion in terms of what, what they said they needed. Did I miss that? Uh, uh, Angela had said had had just thrown out the number of 100 to 150 thousand dollars that would hire at least another full time person and, and other people that she might need um, to build the system. Again, the the hard part is um, I don't want to. I that's a number she tossed out, but um, with respect to the work that she, you know she needs to do, um, and she also pointed out that there may be other organizations that would be um, helpful or want to help. And so that's that's why I would go up to, you know, that's why I, I expressed the higher number. Um, I don't think that, I don't think that there is a baked number uh, from that, that would help right now. Um, right, I mean, that's, that's, why, that's why I think the number you threw out makes sense is what I'm saying essentially. Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Triano. I should have lowered my hand. I don't have anything else. Okay, yeah. that's a first. Yay! Um, <laughs> uh, Representative Fango, and then Byron. Um, I think I must have um, missed the boat on the one hundred and fifty thousand by that was proposed by Angela. So I apologize. Um, so thanks for bringing that up, Representative Zott, and I. I think maybe I was suggesting to put language in, in the wrong spot in this. So I'm just gonna withdraw the other comments that I made and um, go forward with the 250,000 and I'm not sure where, where it goes at this point. So thank you. Okay, Representative Byron. So with the way we're setting up the language for this on the, the property owner side, would this, 
still allow for them to use existing legal counsel that they have a relationship with, perhaps also a relationship with the uh, history of the property, or does this isolate them to using a, a designated entity? I, I mean, off the top of my head, if you have your own attorney, you would use your own attorney. You wouldn't yeah, but necessarily- would you have access to the funds for reimbursement is my question. I think that the answer to that is no. Um, this isn't a personal, okay. this isn't a personal, pay for your attorney fund. This is to utilize an organization like the Vermont Landlords Association or, um, for their for their um, guidance, much like okay. VLA would be guiding um, tenants who don't have an attorney of their own. All right. No, I just wanted clarity on that. Yep. Representative Hango. Okay. So that brings up a question that I forgot to ask earlier. Um, I am under the impression that not all landlords belong to the Vermont Landlords Association. So I wondered how that funding was gonna work for private landlords. So I guess I have my answer right now on that. And I'm wondering how this, how this can possibly help or how we can make it help private landlords who do not belong to the Vermont Landlords Association or, or access Vermont legal aid. Um, I think in the case, uh, my understanding uh, uh, of the way that the VLA money is 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 uh, structured, or the way the VLA is structured, is that people call, and if they can, if they have the capacity to help, they would help. Um, what uh, Angela had described was um, was a helpline. Was I mean, we, we have a lot of so-called mom and pop landlords who don't have attorneys. And who may call the apart uh, what used to be the Department Owners Association, the Landlords Association, and ask for guidance on certain issues. And I think that for what we're talking about is this limited amount of time between now and the end of the year, where there would be um, essentially, um, well, I, I was going to say essentially a helpline. But I, you know, Angela, do you want to chime in on this about what you envision services to be about non-members? Absolutely. Um, there would be no requirement that somebody be a member of the association to receive assistance for this program. Um, we regularly answer questions for non-members. Uh, we view it as part of our mission with educating landlords around the state of Vermont. Um, and if we were to receive some sort of grant money to help, there, nobody would be required to be a member. Um, I would also anticipate fielding <clears throat> questions for attorneys who are trying to help their clients navigate through this system. So the idea would be to be a resource for all folks on the landlord side. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Representative Gonzalez. I think that does it. I was just going to um, talk about my understanding that the putting in language that doesn't just direct the money towards the landlord association and and so that there is also um, some openness around it. But um, Angela, your, uh, your clarity on being open for landlords who are not part of your association and your clarity of being open for other attorneys um, and available, I think is, is really helpful to me as well. So thank you. Okay, um, David, let's get back to it. Thank you everybody for that. Um, so th that, was all under the umbrella of number four. Do I do I have a final decision on if I'm changing the numbers there, if I'm creating language to specify an appropriation for landlords? If you could, if if you could create language, um, and I would I would insert it uh, as one as right after the VLA language, so like one B, um, and just if I mean. Uh, just, we'll just put two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to DHCD um, for purposes, you know, for for uh, grant purposes for legal services to to landlords. Um, okay. Whatever the whatever the appropriate language would be for that, sure. um, in in accordance with, you know, it could be in accordance with the, you know section blah blah blah, or you know, but I think keeping the. The language that's the language that we're talking about here is if we if we make that decision that it goes to the state housing authority again it 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 unplugs the money from DHCD and so I just want to make sure that they retain the possibility of doing that. Um, is that clear enough? 
Yes, but does that two hundred and fifty thousand come out of the thirty million? That's the no. This is we have a floating one million dollars right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Wendy Morgan. So um, I'm, I apologize for not raising this sooner, but I expected there to be more discussion about it. Um, you mentioned that perhaps April 1 wasn't the right date, but that March 1 was the right date. And I wanna be clear that all of the conversations with the stakeholders on this part of the bill has included rent that was due prior to March 1st. The state's obligation, our thinking on this is that this is to prevent homelessness and the state has, an, has a um, uh, need to keep people safe and to keep preventing the, uh, the expansion of the coronavirus um, amongst the population. So our thinking was that the state's obligation to use this money to prevent further public health concerns would extend to rent that was due prior to March 1st. Um, I have, we have, this has been in our memo and I also I, I emailed directly with Josh Hanford about this several weeks ago and I have not heard any problem with that. So I just think, and I believe that perhaps you had a uh, email from Dick Williams this morning about just cutting out the April 1st uh, date completely. And that's what we would propose as well. Um, with regards to the 250,000, um, I just want to say that I was wondering if when Angela threw out her figures, she was actually thinking about a full year's uh, income and a salary and exp overhead. I don't know, but the legal aid figure is for obviously for a half year, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, all of this money has to be spent by December 30. So those were my only two comments. So you're requesting that the March date be deleted altogether? Yes. And I, I think that's consistent with all the, you can hear from the other stakeholders, but. So the April date only appears in the short version of the $30 million allocation. So if we're going with the long version, then the, then the question about April 1 or not is moot. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay, um, David, where are we? We are on the last bucket, which is the enhanced uh, rehabilitation program. Um, can everybody see the screen? Uh, yes. Rehousing investments. So the short version is it would be $6 million to DHCD to assist landlords with the costs of renovations necessary to provide housing to persons at risk of homelessness or require rehousing due to COVID-19. Uh, the long version is essentially the administration's original proposal uh, for a rehousing recovery program. Um, so that's $6 million to DHCD design and implement rehousing recovery program, provide funding to statewide and regional housing partner organizations to provide grants and forgivable loans to eligible applicants. Right now, this still says forgivable loans just because that was is what was in the administration's original proposal. It, it's obviously up to you whether you keep the whole forgivable loan thing. Um, I, I'll remind you that based on the May 28th update to the FAQs, to the guidance issued by Treasury, that the state can issue monies, COVID monies in the form of a loan. Um, if a loan is repaid prior to December 30th, the loan principal and any interest earned have to be either reused for an, an el for an eligible expenditure or returned to treasury. If the loan is repaid after December 30th, it still has to be returned to the treasury. So uh, functionally, um, if a loan is gonna extend beyond de December 30th, there's not a lot of point in, in making it a loan versus a grant, but those are, that's the guidance we have so far. 
So under B here, administration uh, department will require any partner to develop a standard application, selection process, grants management system, see the requirements. So department will determine um, what form the assistance would be in each grant would have to comply with these requirements. The owner may apply for assistance up to 30,000 per unit. It must be blighted, vacant, or otherwise not comply. Um, the owner has to match at least 10% of the value of the grant or loan and comply with applicable permit and rental housing health and safety laws. All units must be rented at or below uh, fair market rents for at least five years or subject to penalties and repayment requirements as determined by the department. I'm not too sure about that piece. Um, property owner sells or transfers a property improved with the grant within five years. The owner has to repay the funds upon sale or transfer or ensure that the property continues to remain affordable for the remainder of the period. I just, I want to flag that if they actually repay the money to the state, the state will have to return that money to treasury when it's returned. Right. Um, the department will develop requirements regarding incentivizing uh, property owners and organizations to work with local continual care organizations, limit the number of units so any one owner can receive, uh, incentivize the goal, advise the goal that at least 50% of the rehab units serve a person who's exiting homelessness during the initial lease upon completion of work, um, requiring that a percentage of the program participants must serve someone exiting homelessness at the initial lease upon completion of work and associate incentives and requirements and incentives regarding statewide and regional housing partner orgs and property owners working with local continued care organizations. On um, three, four, and five here, I just, I want to flag that, um, you know, if you're using coronavirus funds for this, it, they, the, the person who's uh, occupying the unit doesn't necessarily have to be homeless per se, but I, I, I feel very confident in saying that um, somebody is going to have to ensure, whether it's in the statute or whether it's in the execution of the program, that the assistance that's provided to a landlord is necessary due to the public health crisis and that the uh, person that is assisted, you know, is going to check that box. Otherwise, if you've only got half of these units that are demonstrably uh, being used for a COVID related necessity, then the other half, which, you know, possibly could go out just into the open market would be at risk of recapture from the federal government. I know it's the intent of the department to, you know, house, be, have this be part of the response to rehousing persons who are homeless or need rehousing because of the emergency. But, you know, the way this language reads, it doesn't look certain to me. And that gives me pause. Um, and then definitions, blighted and vacant, you would recognize from the VHIP program. So that's that's this proposal. Okay, we have several questions. Um, Representative Gonzalez, then Zant. Um, less uh, questions, but just thoughts of, I've been thinking about uh, Josh's uh, comments, I think yesterday um, blurs a little bit and how we investing in these houses really is a long-term investment and the amount of houses that we're, we're losing in because of our old housing stock. And so in that, I really think also about the cost of operating. And we haven't talked at all about weatherization um, in this, uh, mostly because wanting to, to get this out the doors as quickly as possible and to reduce the barriers and because we know that if our, our very old leaky homes cost so much to run that I've been thinking about stretch codes and it's just a, uh, all of these houses obviously would be built to code and then these stretch codes are just a little bit more energy efficient. And, um, and so in that having just a little bit more attention to the detail without significantly increasing the cost but having it be a reduction in operation cost and reduction in 
the or an increase in the the life of the, the property and so I want to bring up that idea as a potential to to implement that or to, to add that in there and really increase the the quality and the payback of this investment um, and then just thinking about what David Hall just said in terms of the uh, the potential for the federal government to say not all of this is for COVID related I wonder about if there's some language that um, says something about potential loss of housing. So it's not exactly homelessness, but there's something maybe precariously housed folks or um, uh, something about that, because I think about the, the people who are not necessarily technically homeless, but have been doubling up. And so um, uh, I don't know if there's anything in that, but that's what, what came to mind when David, you, you mentioned that the difficult, the potential difficulty of our language and the, the federal government's requirements. Yeah, can I pass, um, Josh, can, Commissioner? Can you um, speak a little bit? You spoke, you spoke yesterday about some of the uh, provisions that are usually in place for monies that might be used like this throughout the normal course of business. Can you just re-clarify? I mean, I think there's. I mean, the, the word that stuck out here from Representative Gonzalez was was um, weatherization in particular, but but I think that it it illustrates the goal of building a better building a better home with this and and providing a better resource. Can you speak a little bit to that and what kind of review what you said yesterday and and what the department usually is? Sure. I I mean, I think more broadly. You know what I'm struggling with is the details of the language here, and that you know I, I I think we should have the same standards that are in VHCB's language. You know about what level of rehab um, they will undertake as far as weatherization or quality permits required, and as well as the folks that will be housed in these units. You know I, I agree with David that it doesn't need to be exactly. Um, someone homeless to qualify, you know, we could broaden the language to say exiting homelessness or in danger of homelessness without the availability of affordable units due to COVID. There's lots of ways to stretch this to, to make the language eligible. But what I, what I just, I'm not quite understanding is the, the level of, of rehab um, and detailed on these units that isn't reflected in any other language here around what the standards are for the other units that are receiving funding across the board. And so I just want to be fair. I mean, this is less money per unit. You know, they, it says right in there, they have to meet, you know, uh, codes and permits. So they will meet the, the current codes in order to get a, a building permit. Um, we have uh, covenants and grant agreements. I'm having a staff person find um, that language in our grant agreement and sub grant for some of our pilot projects that we funded rehab with you know much smaller numbers to show how we get at that and how we ensure that that I can provide um, the, the, the staff person had a family emergency at the emergency room last night so I'm, I'm trying to find someone else to dig that up for me but um, we can provide that and I think give you assurance that um, this work is done um, with that in mind but I, I just it would look odd to me that this one piece has this level of detail and specificity around what is expected for unit rehab, who is supposed to be served, et cetera, and much larger funding in here doesn't speak to that at all. So that, that's my general comment. And, and if I may, Mr. Chair, um, follow up with that, that I, I think that the, the stretch code would be great to include in the rehabilitation for VHCB as well, that, um, that it's just such a, a small little bit above what code is. And so it's not getting into full weatherization. It's, it's, not, it's not getting into all of those uh, extensive differences between code and not, it's just a, just a little bit better. Um, and so uh, I think that that's, just an, an idea that I'd like to put on the table. And I, I think Commissioner, I fully agree that if we have a language in one place, we should absolutely have it in another place. Yeah, the um, representative Zant. Um, so some of it was already addressed, like when it, with the specific 
usage of the word homelessness, yeah, I, th I certainly think like housing insecurity or precarious housing, as Representative Gonzalez suggested, would be helpful because it is clearly in the public health interest to not have people who are precariously housed end up uh, on the streets. Um, my question, though, uh, was around the timeline of the um, affordable housing requirements and also as David Hall was mentioning, um, he was talking about the uh, penalties somewhere in this language. I'm sorry, I got distracted, but oh yeah, the uh, you know the five years would be subject to loan interest penalties and repayment requirements. And then he sort of mentioned casually as he was reading through that that he wasn't sure about that piece. And then he kind of continued on. So I was curious what part he wasn't sure about because I'm especially concerned about the details of the property or owner transferring the property to someone else, uh, especially if they've received a loan and they haven't, they're not necessarily paying an adequate interest rate. I could see an enterprising land landowner using this money and then quickly transferring it to someone else. And if there's not a heavy enough penalty for that, we're, we lose these units, affordable housing units, or someone just has to pay kind of essentially a fee and they could do the cost benefit analysis and say, well, it's actually in my interest to sell the unit because the cost, you know, the penalty that I pay isn't going to offset, but I'll end up gaining by charging a market rent. And I need to make sure that there's a steep penalty so that that kind of gamesmanship doesn't happen. Okay. Um. I would we would address that by putting a covenant on, on the, the property that comes with the grant that requires for five years that the rents be affordable no matter who the owner is and that transfers with sale you know in the same way it's it's not perpetual as, as some nonprofits you know or BHCB would have but it's the same form and function that the property has a, a lien on it with this condition until uh, the length of time is satisfied. And that's how it's dealt with now in our existing programs that provide any funding to a private property owner, regardless of they be, uh, you know, a business or or housing or a nonprofit providing services. If we're providing public funds, federal funds, there's a length of time that's required for that public benefit to be met, and and that that's how we deal with it. So right now we have the possibility that the unit can be sold uh, and then this penalty paid. And what you're, what you're saying as an alternative is we just remove the prospect of a, and structure it more like a lien. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot more sense. That certainly makes me a lot more comfortable with that language if we just remove that piece. Thank you. Um, next up we have um, Representative Hango and then Shriano. Thank you. I just wanted to also comment on um, supporting broader language around housing insecurity versus 50% homeless or exiting homelessness, as is referenced in, in two of the bullets here. Um, because I really do feel that um, there are there are a number of situations where someone could be housed right now. Um, but would be much better off with one of these rehabbed units um, and may not qualify as actually being homeless. So um, I had something else, but at this moment, I can't remember what it was. So thank you. Okay. Representative Triano. Right, just uh, getting to the point of weatherization, I think there are energy codes right now. I am not certain as to whether or not they apply to renovation as opposed to new buildings, but um, it seems to me that um, any contractor uh, would, who would be working on a renovation of an apartment who found, for instance, uh, rotten uh, window uh, sashes, that uh, those windows would be, be replaced with any energy efficient uh, um, windows. Um, and I think if it was discovered that there was no insulation in the apartment, I think that would also be um, part of the construction. So, you know, I, I think uh, the commissioner had mentioned weatherization as part of this. Um, and I'm not certain as to whether or not we need to specify anymore. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't object to it. But um, I think that the language in there 
uh, would uh, indicate that these renovations would be done in a way that would be energy efficient um, so that landlords had more of an incentive to uh, follow up on that with uh, uh, and being able to maintain um, their rents uh, uh, due to the savings on fuel possibly. And so I think the whole thing kind of trickles down that way that to a point where um, you know, it would be to the best interest of everyone to make sure that these renovations are done in an energy efficient way. Okay, Representative um, Kalaki. Thank you. I, I wanted to uh, say I like the broader language as well around um, homelessness because yesterday I sat in on in the Corrections Committee and uh, Al Cormier was there from Corrections and in the last two months, 300 prisoners have been released uh, statewide. Not, not all of the prisoners have been released because of COVID. A lot have just been released because it was their time to be released. But um, I, and I think that committee may actually put some rental support for people in transition, but transitional housing is really problematic for people leaving the correctional system. So I think that here we should also have not just homeless, but people leaving there and in the rental uh, support as well. We just need to leave it open-ended because otherwise these people are homeless. Um, so I, I, all I'm saying is I like the, the broader language as well that's more inclusive throughout. Okay, Representative Gonzalez. So to um, Representative Tri Triano's um, point in terms of the, the different language between code, stretch code and weatherization, uh, the clarity that weatherization is uh, intentionally going in and uh, putting in insulation, uh, putting, taking, um, reducing how the air, air exchange between the outside and the inside of the house. So uh, putting in new doors, new windows, caulking and sealing all the different leaking spots at, uh, to different levels. That, that is the weatherization. Codes are the safety codes and the, the base codes for any construction, whether that's renovation or new build. And then stretch codes are the codes that are just a little bit better than the standard code. And a lot of those have to do with increased uh, efficiency of a building. So not full on weatherization, but just a little bit more efficiency. So for instance, um, the, the example that Representative Triana, you gave around, if you're, you're going in, you see a windowsill is, is falling apart, you fix that in that process, you make sure that, that the, the base code, and this is where I don't know codes enough to be able to give a specific example, but uh, you know that, that you replace that and you need to also have the efficiency of the air exchange between the inside and the outside to be a certain level. And then if it's stretch codes, it just needs to be a little bit better. So you need to be a little bit more attentive to caulking or you need to be a little bit more attentive to the insulation around the window, which is a little bit um, tricky, which is a spot that windows are leaky all around on the outside as well. And so um, when talking about stretch codes, it's just a little bit more attentive to the, the long-term efficiency of a building without doing much different at all. And those are already laid out. It is, they will, they will be the codes in the next few years. And so it just is getting us um, a little bit ahead and, and with very little effort. And so that's that would, would make our Smiths last uh, longer, uh, particularly with our very old home old houses. So just wanted to clarify that and what I'm arguing for. Okay. Um, Representative Hango. Um, I just wanted to respond about the um, energy efficiency. I it, It's always a great idea to make your dwelling energy efficient. I just don't think that this is the forum to do it in right now. I really think we need to concentrate on um, just allocating this money and getting it to people who are really in severe need right now of not having home to be in. And um, we can continue this discussion, I'm sure, at another point in time. Thank you. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna admit to being um, a little, I don't want to, I'm confused. Um, so just about what we're asking for here, because 
So my first run through on this language that that we that we took from other sources is that first of all the whole concept of forgivable loans needs to be cut. I mean, I think we took testimony from the commissioner yesterday that this is not a loan program. This can't be a loan program. There's no way. I mean, I think I think if someone took a loan out tomorrow and then repaid it by the end of um, December, that they were actually saying we don't want to. We don't want to uh, fulfill the covenants that are that that are being put in place here. We don't want to fulfill this homelessness or precariously housed person. It's kind of like the old the, 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 the original question of HUD funding back in the 80s, which was people could buy their way out of their obligations. And that's what the forgivable loan sounds like to me after after hearing it today. So um, it's 1022. Um, I want to say what so what is it that we're if we're putting this in there's two there's a, once again there's a choice there's a much more expansive language in this and there's much less expansive language in this um the expanse the much less expansive language is oh, very broad um but it doesn't address much of what we were talking about here so the question that i have for us is what is the simplest language we've we've heard from the commissioner that um, um, we've heard from the commissioner that there are many covenants of existing programs in place that would that would occur with this program as well. So what are we comfortable with in terms of putting this allocation into this session law this morning. Um, so I'm just I want to I want us to like take this whole conversation, all of which is valid and bring it down to a point of like, what do we want David to put in our document um, for our approval? Specifically, do we want to say $6 million goes to DHCD for this rehabilitation program and it shall um, follow existing tenets of what DHCD already does? Does it, is it, um, because I mean, again, I, I'm uh, the reality to me is that a grant is a grant is a grant. I don't know what leverage we have to take back that grant except through a lean program, as 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 the commissioner was talking about. Um, it, the the commissioner can put if, if we keep it that broad, the commissioner can put the things that we're concerned with um, into those agreements. Is that something we need to write down today? Um, or is that something that by keeping it as, as broad as the original language is, or perhaps a little bit of an improvement on it? Um, can, is, that, is that what we're talking about here? Chip, Representative Trano. Um, I think the specificity is um, a good thing. Um, I do think that um, we should uh, make it known um, to um, all who may apply for these funds that uh, number one uh, there would be a transferable covenant uh, on this on the property as far as um, uh, maintaining uh, a, an affordable rent um, in that particular unit or the units included in that uh, dwelling um, and i think that um, everyone should know that when they enter into this so i would i would suggest that we do um, uh, put some language in there that would um, indicate that there are uh, there are some protections and restrictions um, on those who apply and, and, and receive these grants as far as maintaining the, um, the uh, affordability of the unit. Representative Waltz. Well, I find myself agreeing with Representative Troiano over and over again, and he said exactly the point I want to make, yes, I support that same concept. So David, do you have enough of what this last 10 or 15 minutes of conversation on this section has been to draft something that is um, more concise and yet um, addresses the, the broadness that we're looking for in terms of the language instead of being as prescriptive as we are, as, as what's on the paper right now? I can try. <laughs> okay. Um, so, David, what is your schedule for Senate Economic Development? Uh, 
Is the catch as catch can today? I think I'm supposed to be there in four minutes. But uh, I think this is due to be to appropriations at noon, is it not? Yes. And so what I would like to propose to us is um, I would like I would like us to um, right now go back to page one and scroll through stuff and say yes or no on what we've worked on. I'd like to leave you, I'd like to end this meeting and I would like us to come back at 1130 or at 1145 um, if that works for the committee so that we can see a, a, see the, the draft that would come, the clean draft that would come out of our work right now. And um, is, that, is that sufficient for the committee? All right, so if we can be done in, a, in just a few minutes here. So, so David, um, you put up on the screen section. So we're, we're now back to what's on, um, David is sharing on the screen. So section one, the question is $550,000 to Vermont Legal Aid. Yes, thumbs up, thumbs down. All right, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm, I'm, can you guys do the the hand? Can you do the can you do the um, hand uh, raise on your participant list? I can't see you with with everything here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm an eight. Um, and those people who uh, who would vote no. All right. I see two people voting no for direct. Um, all right. So that's so that stays. Um, Uh, we have a new B, um, $250,000 to DHCD for grants to organizations that provide assistance um, to uh, landlords during, I, I say, um, uh, whom, to assistance to landlords. Um, I, I can flesh it out. I just yeah. trying to make sure I have it. Yeah, and just, and just end it with due to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, is everybody, um, hold on, let me just lower people's hands here. Everybody's okay with this or, or I'm sorry, who is okay with this? Um, I see three, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and who is not lower your hands and people who are not okay with this. I'm sorry, Representative Gamash and Howard, are you okay with this? I see this. Um... Sorry, I didn't lower my hand, okay. but I did now. Okay. Um, all right, so that's that's majority of people are in favor of that. Section two, um, we are down to, um, I think that's, I think we want, we, we, we came to some consensus, not 100%, but consensus is never 100%, but we came um, to consensus that the language that is here, the longer language under housing and facilities is the preferred language, but that the appropriation or the allocation would be 9 million. Um, folks, if you wanna raise your hands on that. Okay, and people who do not prefer that language, uh, everybody lower your hands, please. And then um, anybody who finds, who doesn't care for that language, please raise your hand. All right, so David, that's set. Um, foreclosure protections. at $6 million, which is the administration ask. Um, are we, 
the the gist of this is um the the gist of this is um do we name the vermont housing finance agency um and then utilize the language that's here uh representative hango your hand is up is there a question okay um so all those in favor of this longer, more prescriptive language that names the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, please raise your hand. Maura, put your hand down. Um, and if any, and so you can remove your hands. And if there's anybody who's opposed to this language, please raise it. Okay, thank you. So that is that on the um, foreclosure protection. Rental assistance is $30 million. Um, what is the second, the second language is, um, the second language is the one where we're either considering um, I think we were cons that we had consensus on the longer language. Bless you, whoever that was. Um, so the um, everybody who's in favor of using the second language, which t which tells um, DHCD to appropriate these funds to the state housing authority. Please raise your hand. Okay, and lower your hands and anybody who's opposed to it, please. Okay, thank you. So David, that's the second language, the, the one that appropriates it directly to the state housing authority. Rehousing investments. This is what we were just talking about. So I think we have. Um, um, so David, I think we need you to come back with um, language that um, gets rid of forgivable loans and that addresses the concerns that the committee expressed about um, having some some. Um, Keeps it broad, but also you know matches. I think I heard matches some of the VHCB language, but also that um, that addresses some of the issues that came up about affordability and um, stretch codes or whatever. I don't know how best that's going to be phrased, but if you can come up with something um, in the next you know little bit and have something, do you, could you think you might be able to have something for us at eleven thirty? 11.45, probably. Okay. So can I, I have, I have some questions if you're ready. Yeah. So that puts you at $51,800,000. Even with taking the 2 million away from the 11? Yep. I'm not sure what the target is. It's 52. All right, so you have an extra $200,000. Wow, this feels like the wheel of fortune. Um, I would, um, I would, I just say, let's just talk about it at eleven forty-five. No, well, no, because we actually want to have a set. Pro we actually want to have a set thing at eleven forty-five. Um, so uh, two hundred thousand. Let's. Uh, can we put the, the two hundred thousand in with the rehousing investments to just bump that up as high as we can get in tier one, please? If that's okay with everybody. I would agree. I agree as well. Agreed. Representative Hanko. Thank you. I'm having trouble unmuting myself. Um, what are we doing with section two right what now? Is, what is section two? Uh, 
isn't that the whole rest of the tier two stuff that's in this bill? It still exists, right? Or am oh, I, I would, I would, again, I, well, my suggestion is that we delete it for the time being and, and have this further conversation. I mean, so much of, and, and again, that further conversation may be as soon as tomorrow or Friday, but I think, um, I, I think it's, it, it's better if we do not have it in the tier one proposal. Um, there's too many unknowns. It's too many unknowns just given the uptake. We're not gonna know what the uptake of the program is tomorrow or Friday, but I think as we move forward and also in consideration of what we will hear tomorrow from AHS and their proposal, I think it's wise that we um, delete it. Okay, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure because yep. we hadn't talked about it at all and you're asking David to come back, so thank you. Yep. No, out of sight, out of mind for me. That was gone in my head a couple hours ago, so. Um, okay. Yep, okay, thank you. Um, Representative Howard? Did you have a question? No. Representative Kalaki. Uh, I, I, I love where this is going. I, I do, um, I'm looking at some proposed language about at the very end of this bill. Uh, and it would be any award, and this is coming from um, legal aid. No. no? Okay. Well, I mean, I, I, I agree in theory with the language. If we want to share it with, um, I think it's really late to start talking about that, but if um, if we want to share that language with David Hall, okay. The, oh, my my concern with the committee, you have to look at it in the next hour, and and we have to have it ready to go. I mean, go ahead. And I don't know, John, if this language is already included in the larger package or not. So, um, but what is your concern? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I cut you off. What language? Yeah. Um, well, it, it's. What I raised the last couple of days, if we need to recalibrate in September, may be the first indication that some of the monies are over allocated and some are under allocated. And I don't think we can wait till December to in the last week of December have these dollars that are un unutilized. So I think that there's a, a kind of check in point um, in September for the agency to really look at all the different regranting that's been done and say, perhaps that more money needs to be going somewhere else. If, um, you know, and I'm just, I'm just, I, I want every dollar spent. I don't want $2 to go back to the federal government on December 30th. And so I'm just trying to find a way. So if it's in the overall bill chair, that that's great. And then I, 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 would and I don't know. And I don't know that it is, but it is, right. it is, you know, um, representative Hango. I just want to know where Representative Kalaki is looking because I'm lost. It's that's it's got to be shared to committee. This came from an advocate, so it has to be shared oh, with committee. Okay, thank you. So, um, if the advocate would share that with the whole or share it with Ron, please, so that Ron can send it out to the whole committee, and um, and let's come back. Um, and also share it with David so that he can include it at the end of the document. Again, I don't know if it's in the larger bill. It's a, I don't know if it's something that appropriations can add. Um, it's not, it's not an invalid request. It's just very late to spend any, we don't have any time to consider a longer conversation about what it means beyond the, the basic concept. So, um, but if, if it's shared to our committee um, and if you can review it in the next well, David said he might have, he, he should be able to get a draft for us by 11.45. Um, I'm sure, if, is that sufficient? Will people be able to get back online at 11.45 for a final vote on this? Or please do, um, this is kind of the, the, this is kind of where we are. We also have, um, and then we can consider basically what David is proposing for the broader language on the rehousing and um, we can consider this language. Representative Zott. I just want a clarification. Well, I mean, we probably don't know, but I have a uh, an appointment I can't change between 1 and 1.30. Uh, so I just don't know how long we anticipate the reconvening to go. 15 minutes. I, what's that? 15 minutes. 
Okay, great. Yeah, no, we, I, I just, our deadline is at noon and I'm sure noon 05, they'll still keep the door open for us, but I um, would like to be done by noon. All right, sorry, everybody, uh, Ron, you have a question? Just alerting members that I've sent you a new link, a new Zoom meeting link, it says O2 for a second session that'll start at 11.45 today. So that's already gone out, you can look for it. And Representative Stevens, I remind you that you have an 11.15 at Senate Economic Development. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Just doing my job. I know. No, that's good. I was. Um, so everybody, yeah, that's just fine. And then we are on the floor at I don't know two o'clock um, for normal everyday um, hijinks. And so uh, I want to thank you for everybody. I'll and I'll thank you again at eleven fifty nine. Um, but thank you all for your work today. This was. Um, we pounded through a lot of work here to get to this point. And um, thank you for your patience and for, um, and for your work. This has been, this has been a, an incredible week. So, um, and we're not done yet.